Welcome back everyone to Learn Medicine by Dr. Nikita. So today's topic as requested by most of my students is chemotherapy, right? So this topic falls into the sixth semester from pharmacology and we'll be discussing about all the drugs, their mechanism of action briefly, how the drugs are helping in treating the cancers and the tumors, right? So first of all, if we uh, understand the word chemotherapy, right? So it clearly means, let's break it down into two parts. Chemo and therapy. Chemo means chemical and then we are using these chemicals for a treatment purpose. So why are we using uh, chemotherapy? For treating cancers and tumors. Okay, let's have a quick discussion about what is, uh, why is chemotherapy required? So first of all, uh, there are cases of treating cancer. Either the cancer could be treated by killing the cell. Right? We can treat the cancer by killing the cell or we can treat the cancer condition by inhibiting its growth. These are the two prime motives. So if we are not going into proper classification as a general idea, what do you do? How do you treat cancer? Something which is rapidly multiplying and is dangerous to the body. Either you start targeting and killing those cells or you start to suppress its growth. These are the two common approaches of treating a cancer, right? Now if I say uh, these are the two approaches, then what are the other things apart from chemotherapy which are being commonly used in treating cancer? We all very well know that is surgery, a removal of the tumor, a removal of the cancerous mass from the body that is very helpful in treating cancer. Then we have radiotherapy, In radiotherapy, the radio waves are being used for treating the cancer. We have immunotherapy. So there are multiple therapies. So these, these are the therapies along with which chemotherapy is also given. So it is kind of an adjunct therapy treatment or along with these treatment, chemotherapy is also given to patients to uh, first of all, after the mess is all cleaned, whatever the remaining cells are there, they are suppressed or directly killed with the help of the chemical, that is the drugs. So let's get into that. Uh, whenever we are discussing about tumors, so there are two types, malignant and benign, right? We must have heard these terms somewhere here or the other malignant or benign so whenever i say or whenever you hear the word malignant malignancy so they are basically going metastasis undergoing the process of metastasis or they are propagating so if this kind of a tumor is existing it is not only present in one area it is propagating to the nearby areas and is spreading so this kind of a cancer or tumor, it spreads either to the nearby cells or through the circulatory system by entering the bloodstream. The second one that is the benign, this grows but only at the point of its formation. So it grows but it never spreads. It never spreads. So this is the classic differentiation between the types of tumors. Uh, so just to give an idea, we are not getting into detail of the types of cancers and tumors that we will discuss in the future lectures. Okay. Now let's come back to this board. Why have I drawn so many pictures and why do we again need to start learning about the cell cycle and the DNA replication? Okay. So if you have to break down the mechanism of the drugs which are used for treating cancer or the drugs used in chemotherapy, we have to quickly revise two things from our HAP, uh, from first year, second year syllabus, that was the cell cycle. I hope so you can clearly see the cell cycle here, right? I just highlighted, this is the cell cycle and this is the mitosis condition. So if I quickly revise this into few lines, then cell cycle was the process 
in which the cell was preparing itself for the replication stages or for multiplication. After the cell cycle passes through the three stages, the first one being the G1 phase, the second one being the S phase, the third one being the G2 phase, the cell finally enters the M phase. Right? M phase is responsible for mitosis and on completion of the M phase, the steps involved in the M phase are, they start from prophase, then metaphase, then anaphase, then telophase and finally cytokinesis leads to the formation of two daughter cells and that is how we get the result of mitosis that is two identical twins, two identical cells of the body and the cell finally completes its cell cycle, right? On the second half, there are some things which are happening which are helping the cell to prepare itself to undergo the process of mitosis that is indicated on the right side of the board. We'll discuss that as well. So let's quickly start from the cell cycle. If I say the G1 phase or the growth 1 phase, S phase or the G2 phase, in these phases there are certain things which are happening. In G1 phase, the cell has started to prepare for growth. The organelles, they start to multiply in number, to get twice in number. Lysosomes, Golgi, bodies, everything they start to form two copies, right? Here, this is the DNA, this is the nucleus in the cell. The organelles are dividing because the cell has to undergo mitosis later on. Then after this replication of the organelles has completed, the cell enters the S phase. In the S phase, the cell is undergoing the replication of DNA because the DNA is now forming copies. Why? Because we require more DNA as the cell has to form two identical copies. Right? So in this phase, after in the S phase, the cell is undergoing DNA replication. After the DNA replication is complete, that is DNA forms its copies. After the DNA replication is complete, the cell enters the G2 phase. In the G2 phase, the cell is preparing itself for mitosis by growing, by growth, right? So these are the three stages. So if I quickly summarize all the three stages, G1 phase would be related to the replication of organelles. Replication of organelles. And what are these organelles? All the organelles apart from the nucleus, right? Like Golgi bodies, lysosomes, mitochondria, ribosomes. So all of them are replicating because we need two of them. We need twice the number of whatever it was present because we, in the end of this cycle, we need to have two identical copies. So twice the number. In the S phase, the DNA is replicating. DNA replication is happening. In the G2 phase, the cell is starting to grow and prepare for replication, right? To undergo the M phase. After the G2 phase completes, the cell enters the M phase, which is the starting of the M phase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Coming to this one, when the cell enters the M phase, that is the mitotic phase or the mitosis phase, here in the prophase, First of all, the centrosome, it forms its copy or it doubles in number. Now, there are two centrosomes apart from one centrosome initially present, right? One centrosome initially present. Now, we have two centrosomes. In prophase, the chromosomes have, now they start to appear distinguishedly. So, they are prominent, more prominent, more clearer and we have two centrosomes. When the cell enters the metaphase, the chromosomes align in the center axis and the centrosome, they start forming microtubules. Microtubules. Right? These microtubules attach to the chromosome and in the anaphase, these microtubules start shrinking. These microtubules start shrinking and they pull the chromosomes half into each side of the axis, right? They are pulling the chromosome into each side of the axis. After the anaphase gets completed, in case of telophase, 
the boundary or the membrane it starts to shrink and when it starts to shrink ultimately there is a complete segregation of the chromosomes into two equal halves and we have and the cytoplasm now in the cytokinesis in the cytokinesis the cell has now two completely different cytoplasms two completely different cells and these are called as the daughter cells so why were we discussing all of this the replication the cell phase and all, all these processes let's one let's discuss one more thing which is still left to revise that is dna replication coming to that <clears throat> this one the process of dna replication so there are two nucleotide base pairs commonly known as purines and pyrimidines you must have heard of so purines are adenine and guanine and pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine right so these are the pyrimidine base pairs in dna replication what is happening dna is a double helix structure we all know it starts to unwind and when anything unwinds if there is a rubber band and two rubber bands are uh, rolled to each other and you are pulling both strings obviously in clearing of the coiling process the other part which is already coiled when you pull the two ends the other part which is coiled that will become super coil that will be super coil right so in order to clear the process of super coiling we have an enzyme here called as topoisomerase topoisomerase enzyme it cut opens the dna fragments it relaxes the dna relaxes the super coiling and again attaches the dna fragments to reform the dna double helix structure so topoisomerase is basically helping in clearing the process of super coiling or coiling of the dna so when the dna is split open because of the helicase enzyme helicase enzyme is responsible for breaking the bonds formed between purines and pyrimidines between the two strands of dna this enzyme is responsible for cutting open the dna strands letting them free because when the two strands are freely available the enzyme dna polymerase which enters it starts to run on the strand on one of the strand and this is called as the leading strand so in this process the free nucleotides which are present here they start attaching and we all know that purine binds to pyrimidine right so if this is adenine then this must be thymine right and if this one this black one is guanine then this must be cytosine right so this is the basic structure of how the bonds are formed in dna so this strand is exactly a copy of this strand whatever new leading strand is being formed it is a copy of the lagging strand the enzyme dna polymerase is responsible for the formation of the leading strand whereas in the lagging strand whenever a free segment of uh, the dna strand is available because here the enzyme is running in this manner so whatever super coiled dna is now freely available the enzyme starts to run in this direction and forms some fragment which we called as the okazaki fragments okazaki fragments so i'm not here to discuss this entire process maybe we have another class discussing deeply about dna replication and the cell cycle phases just to give you an overview because now we'll be discussing about how these drugs are acting and if you will not have any idea of this then you will not be able to understand that will just be you will end up in mugging up all of that so i don't want you to do that so if you have a brief idea of this now let's move down to the four different classification of cancer drugs so thank you do like share and subscribe to our channel learn medicine by dr nikita we are on social media platforms we are on youtube and on facebook instagram and linkedin and on my youtube there is my email id you can uh, drop in any uh, suggestions 
I would love if you drop in the comment section that will uh, help me to give a clear idea what the topics you want me to teach next. So keep following. Thank you.